Southern California's longest running public affairs program. On this edition of News Conference, a measles outbreak, quarantines at UCLA and Cal State Los Angeles, an anti-vaccination protest at the state capitol. Are we headed for a public health crisis over a disease we thought had been eradicated decades ago? Also in Sacramento, a proposed law that would lead to high-density apartment buildings in neighborhoods where they are currently not allowed passes a key committee. Are we about to radically alter zoning laws in the state? And is California's commitment and spending on public education about to expand through universal pre-K, early childhood education? Those questions and more for State Assembly Speaker Anthony Rendon, one of the most powerful figures in California politics. And a remarkable survey released this week indicates over half of L.A. County residents have or are considering leaving because of the high cost of living. Is this the beginning of Country Club California, where only the wealthy can afford the rents, real estate, and taxes? We talk with former L.A. County Supervisor Zev Yaroslavsky, now director of the Los Angeles Initiative at the UCLA Luskin School of Public Affairs. Good morning and welcome to the Tom Brokaw News Center here at Universal City. I'm Conan Nolan. With us, the Honorable Anthony Rendon, member of the California State Assembly, Democrat from Paramount. He's also the State Assembly Speaker and, as such, one of the most powerful political figures in California. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks. It's always nice to see you. Good to see you. Uh, lots to talk about, but let's start with something topical. UCLA, Cal State Los Angeles, they're quarantining students because of measles. You had a remarkable uh, scene in the state capitol uh, this past week with hundreds of parents protesting against a bill that would tighten up on the, on the uh, exemptions for students being inoculated. 22 states has a measles, measles outbreak. Are we looking at a public health crisis for this state? Hopefully not, and it's something that we need to make sure that that, 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 that doesn't happen. Uh, you're right, there were a lot of protesters or protesting against vaccines. I'm happy to report that there were uh, just as many, if not more, folks who are from the medical community who were talking about how important vaccines are. We need to make sure we don't have this, this sort of epidemic. What's happening at Cal State LA, what's happening at UCLA, it's really not, uh, really not where we need to be as a society or as a state. We have a bill already, or law already, that requires a doctor to write a, essentially an excuse for uh, a kid not to be vaccinated. That hasn't worked, which is why you have this new bill. What does this new bill do? This bill would crack down on doctors who, there's a lot of doctors who essentially make a practice out of giving these exemptions and we want to shut that down. The opponents to that bill say you are getting in the way of the patient-doctor relationship. It should be doctors, not bureaucrats. Right. Well, I mean, we, we, we need to make sure it's good doctors. We need to make sure there's doctors who, who are, are, you know, using medical science in the way that, that we know they ought to be using it. And that's for that's the only way that we're going to prevent these epidemics from happening. Let's talk another major uh, priority is housing. There's a bill on the other side, Senate Bill 50. We had Scott Weiner here, the author of that bill last week. It, it passed out of committee. It's not yet to your house. But it would essentially bigfoot local zoning laws when it comes to high density development along transit lines. We're going to have Zev Yaroslavsky in a few minutes, who's going to be very much opposed to that. Is that the kind of you don't have to say yes or no on SB 50, but is there a consensus in your caucus that something drastic has to be done in order to increase the housing supply in the state? We think something drastic has to be done in order to, yes, make sure that there's more housing stock. Whether or not it's SB 50 or something else, we're going we're gonna to work out on those, work out those details. With respect to this piece of legislation, this week Senator Weiner took a, an amendment to exempt small counties, for example. I think that's a step in the right direction. That being said, we know that in certain corridors, uh, increasing density makes a tremendous amount of sex, a tremendous amount of sense is really the only way we're going to start to address our housing crisis. You have a bill in the legislature that's going to cap uh, rent hikes to something like 5% above the consumer price index. There are apartment owners who say, listen, once you start getting into the business of telling what landlords can, can make on the rent, you will dry up the revenue that is used to help build housing. Is there a concern that this is an area you should for right now stay out of and let the market carry us through this? I think most of the proposals, I would say all the proposals that we have in, in our house anyway, are built around market mechanisms. What we need to do is make sure that the market me mechanisms are, are being utilized and at the same time that, that, uh, that uh, landlords aren't gouging uh, tenants. Still though, local governments have been responsible for building housing. Is it time for the state to get involved? 
Well, we did get involved a couple of years ago. We had diff diff different pieces of legislation that have a carrot approach, different pieces of legislation that have a stick approach to try to make sure that that these uh, that that state governments, uh, city governments, I should say, build more housing, and we need to make sure they do that. Obviously, the governor took a, a action recently by threatening and indeed suing some cities. And, uh, you know, those are the types of actions that we're taking as a state. On Monday, you're going to be talking about something that's near and dear to your heart, which is early childhood education. There's going to be a Blue Ribbon Commission report that's released that essentially says, well, you can tell me what it says, but that there is a demand for it. There are people in need that, that, it, that it certainly helps with getting a child on the right start towards an education and ultimately has a, a, a vehicle to lift them out of poverty. Do I have that right? Absolutely. Are you looking at expanding K through 12 education and the, and the financial commitment of the taxpayers of K through 12 to pre-K? That everybody has their kid in an institution that is in a school before kindergarten. That's not necessarily what the Blue Ribbon Commission report says. The Blue Ribbon Commission report does say that early childhood education is best for all children. The report doesn't call for the state to necessarily provide. So what's the goal? Care. The goal is to make sure that the, the existing child care programs we have are improved, to make sure that the teachers are well paid, to make sure that the teachers are qualified. The goal is to make sure that we have as much parental involvement as possible. I ran early childhood education organizations for 20 years. The best organizations, the best programs were, what, were those that had parental involvement, where the parents and the, and the kids uh, worked through uh, some of the projects together, where the parents were involved in some of the curricular development. And the other component of this is to make sure that those kids with the greatest need, with the greatest need, are those who are prioritizing and receive these services first. How much is this going to cost? It depends. I mean, the, some of the proposals are, like, exam for example, increasing slots. That, that comes with a dollar figure. Other parts talk about parental involvement. That doesn't have a dollar figure. Ultimately, what this is designed to do is to make sure that future legislator, legislatures, when it comes uh, to the budget cycle, can look at these as possible areas of investment. We've invested about a billion dollars in early childhood education over the past three or four years. This is a uh, sort of a guidepost for future legislatures to do the same thing. Anthony Rendon is the Speaker of the California State Assembly. We'll have a few more questions when we return. Plus, Xavier Zlowski, former LA County Supervisor on SB 50, that bill which would bigfoot some local zoning laws when it comes to high-density development. That's when we return.